Our titillating planet is filled to the brim with incredible species, sights, secrets, and wonders to behold. Today, we'll jaunt around the globe on a mind-altering journey of discovery and look Mother Nature dead in her beady little eyes as we become immersed in the fruit of her loins, the natural world. I am Wallace Buttersnips, and I will be your guide as we explore the wonders of nature that are often overlooked. I'm positively jammed to the lines and frankly a little erect, so let's get right into it. From the fucking hot deserts of Africa to the give you swamp ass rainforests of South America, we will venture into some of the world's most remote and undesirable regions, uncovering the fascinating stories behind the creatures that inhabit them. We will witness the struggle for survival as animals fucking murder each other in brutal fashion, real Jeffrey Dahmer shit, and adapt to their ever-changing environments and the complex social dynamics that exist within different species. As we journey across the globe, we will encounter creatures both great and small, each with their own unique story to tell. Whether it's the giant elephants of the savannah, the tiny insects that pollinate our plants, or the elusive predators that roam the forests at night and scare the ever-loving bejesus out of me, we will witness the incredible resilience and adaptability of life on Earth. So hold on to your dicks and join me as we embark on this journey of discovery and uncover the hidden wonders of nature that are all around us. The ocean is big. It's really fucking big. Like, you know that feeling when you're in a big body of water and you can't see even your feet and you just imagine all sorts of icky, weird and vicious creatures staring up, waiting to take a bite out of a toe, a leg, nom a bit on the tip of your dinky. That feeling is called thalassophobia and it's the fear of large body of waters, I have it and I'm not ashamed about it. So when these producer geeks asked me to narrate this section, I initially said, no way. I hate fishes. I only like the fried kind I can eat, or sardines, or those little beta fish you get at the store that somehow live forever. But in reviewing this amazing footage, I've had a change of heart. The ocean is a wonderful place, so let's hold our breath and dive right into the deep blue sea and take a look at some of the wonderful sea fishes that live below the waves. This is a clownfish. It's a tricky little bugger that lives in sea anemic, an enemoi, enemas, sea enemas. They can't get stung because their skin is coated in a thick layer of fish ejaculate they coat themselves liberally with every morning, sort of like a fucked up bathing ritual. Or in other words, my morning routine. These colorful little fish are often spotted in aquariums as they are popular among children for some ungodly reason. Possibly because they were the star of a little-no indie film called Finding Nemo from some pixel company or so I've been told. In that film, a daddy clown fish is an all-around horrible parent. First, it loses all its babies in the first five minutes. Amateur hour, am I right? But the one left gets abducted by some bogan Australian blokes who make off with the poor little fish and put it in some tank. Then the daddy clownfish has to say, no, I'll get you back and find you, and enlist the help of Ellen DeGeneres in order to save them. I always fall asleep, so I don't know how it ends, but I'm assuming they all die? Just a hunch. Anyways, these little fish live in reefs and are nice and brightly coloured in order to better be spotted by predators and eaten, as they're fairly low on the food chain. Anywho, that's the story of the clownfish. What else do we have? Sharks? Ooh, I like these guys. Sharks are pretty fucking cool, right? I just love how they swim around. Bar dum, bar dum, bar dum, bar dum, bar dum, bar dum, dum. You know, like in that Jaws movie, I really liked when it ate all of those beachgoers. So fun. Got me kind of hard just thinking about it again. Anyway, sharks live in every ocean, so there's no escaping their reign of terror. 
Here are some weird shark facts for you. The hammerhead shark's wide-set eyes provide it with 360-degree vision, making it easier to spot prey. Plus, it makes them look fucking weird. And as we all know, the weirder something is, the more I fear it, like furries. I'm aroused but also terrified at the sight of those bastards. The basking shark is the second largest fish in the world, but feeds on tiny plankton and has a throat the size of a human fist. Coincidentally, my ex-wife had a throat the size of a human fist, as it had been stretched wide by taking too many dicks, owned by other men the cheating floozy. The whale shark, despite its name, is not a whale, but the world's largest fish. It can grow up to 40 feet long and weigh up to 20 tons. I wonder what it tastes like. From sharks, let's discuss now one of their yummiest and tastiest foods, the penguins. So, as we all know, pingolings are known for their black and white tuxedo-like appearance, which they use to attract mates. When it comes to mating, pingogogogs are actually quite chivalrous creatures. The male pingling will approach a female pengon and offer her a small fish as a gift. If she accepts the fish, it means she's interested, and the male will proceed to serenade her with a beautiful rendition of My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Once the female is suitably impressed by his singing, the male will perform a series of elaborate dance moves, including the famous plang-in waddle and a few breakdance moves to win her over. If she's still interested, the two will then engage in a romantic dance, spinning around in circles and rubbing their bellies together. Finally, when the mood is just right, the male and female pangolin will engage in a passionate embrace, their beaks interlocking as they consummate their love. Much more romantic than anything I've ever done, that's for sure. If my night of fun can't be bought for 100 quid from some back alley whore, then it's too rich for my blood, am I right, fellas? <laughs> Let's take a journey out of the oceans and into vast savannas of Africa. Africa, being the birthplace of humankind, is a wonderful place to see all the amazing animals from the Lion King, or at least the ones who didn't go extinct or poached between the Lion King's release in 1994 and the present day. To start off, we must give respect and give props to the original G, the king of the jungle, the lion. Lions have generally been regarded as king of the jungle for at least a few decades, at least. I don't know the exact history of how their monarchy came about, but I'm assuming it's like our own here in jolly good England, which is to say it was imposed on the peasantry through the use of force, economic bribery, and the swaying of the clergy to install the lion as the rightful ruler of the savannah under God. But that's just conjecture. Either way, the lions are tough fuckers regardless. They eat most of their fellow critters on the savannah, which means they are lousy neighbours and likely get strongly worded letters written about them to the local council. I'm rambling, let me hit you with some lion knowledge. This is a nature documentary after all. Lions are big. I don't have the exact figures here in front of me on this sheet of paper the geeks behind the glass gave me to read, but I've seen one down at the zoo and they can be quite large, much larger than any local house cat, that's for sure. They're also fast. Not as fast, I suppose, as a cheetah, but pretty damn fast. They have cool hair, or at least the men do. And like all good patriarchal societies, they make the females of their species do most of the work, like child raising, hunting, and generally anything that requires work. All in all, lions are pretty cool, I guess, but let's explore some of the animals the lion shares a savanna with. I've been told I've not been conveying enough animal facts, so here are some I've written down about elephants. Elephants are the largest land animal on the planet. Adult males, or bull elephants, stand up to three meters high and weigh up to 6,000 kilograms on average. Bull is right. 
The average adult male elephant's penis is on average six feet long. Disproportionate to penis size, however, the average elephant ejaculates only about 100 milliliters, or enough to fill a standard champagne glass. Those last two facts weren't written down, just thought it was something you ought to know. Elephants are generally amiable creatures at the zoo, less so in the wild. They kill around 500 people per year in the wild and in Africa and so forth. Lions only kill on average 250 per year, so I take my chances with the lions. Elephants have fun, big Dumbo ears. They can waggle around to cool themselves off. They also have long trunks, and I have a bet with my producer, Jeremy, that elephants could sniff their own assholes if they wanted to. Jeremy has his doubts. Jeremy's no fun. Enough about elephants, though, and their amazing penises. Let's look at another fun savannah inhabitant, the hippo. Hippos are the large and in charge sexy motherfuckers of the animal kingdom. I'm sort of a more to love minded individual with my taste in women, a chubby chaser into the thunder thighs. So seeing an animal with a donk like this really speaks to me. I'm into big fat women is what I'm trying to say. And this segment is reminding me of that fact and making me, quite frankly, very horny. So it's probably best if we just move on to an animal that doesn't make me so erect. This segment is likely not going to end well, and Jeremy is giving me the don't talk about this move on gesture with his hand. So I'm for once going to heed that advice and take a quick break to spend some alone time in the nearby janitor's closet, mercilessly beating my meat to a video my friend Cinnamon sent me on Snapchat. Wait, what did you think I was going to wank to? The baboons? You are all godless perverts, the lot of you. I don't swing that way. Animals, for Christ's sake. Although Cinnamon is very monkey-like in nature, and on more than one occasion I may have seen her sniff her hand after scratching her ass. but who's perfect after all? On the subject of something warm, moist and often sticky, let's discuss the rainforest an amazing and biodiverse biome on planet Earth. Some of the most amazing and weird animals live here. It's scary, really, how many undiscovered animals live here. You can practically spit and hit an undiscovered species of ant or frog. Then you can name it something stupid and Latin-like. For example, if I found a new species of particularly well-hung lemur, I'd name it Lemuridae magnophallus. Pretty good, right? There are lots of interesting animals to be found here under the leafy canopy. For example, this species of snake was first discovered by graduate students from the Timothy Wanalikadik University who found this perplexing reptile whilst on a holiday drunken bender in the jungles of Costa Rica. This particular species of snake, known to locals as El Gran Defecador, or to researchers as the Peter Macy serpent, can defecate more volume of excrement in relation to its body weight in one sitting than any other species of animal on the planet. Its poos are so massive, it can shat five-sixths of its own body weight in a single sitting. If the snake is not careful, it can literally shit its brains out, and often does after mating. Scuttling below the trees, right down near their roots, are some of nature's hardest workers. The ants. Ugh, I hate these things, but Jeremy is making me talk about them. I'm going to ditch the script and tell you about a fascinating documentary I saw about ants. And yes, Jeremy, I know this is a documentary, but to anywho, in this documentary there was an inventive yet clumsy ant who accidentally destroys his colony's food supply meant for the tyrannical grasshoppers. Desperate to redeem himself, the little ant embarks on a journey to find warrior bugs to help defend his colony. But, and this is the funny bit, he inadvertently recruits a group of misfit circus bugs who ultimately band together to outsmart the grasshoppers and save the colony. 
Jeremy is giving me the move on sign, but I thought it was a pretty good documentary. Let's see what this script says. Ants are strong and can lift up to six times their weight. Ants have been known to pick up unsuspecting sleeping people, children mostly, and carry them off to their colony and raise them as one of their own, producing feral jungle children. OK, that last one isn't true, but would be pretty sweet if that happened. North of the jungles of South America, in the American South, is a putrid, moist, hot swath of Acadian goodness known as the Great Southern Swamp. There's been recent talk of draining it, but for now it's still here. And in it are some truly ugly creatures. Like this one. The alligator is one bad motherfucker. Older than dirt and mean as hell. These ornery creatures have been terrorising backwards inbred hillbillies for decades. Highly territorial, they love nothing more than to catch the unsuspecting redneck off guard when they drunkenly jump into the brackish water in order to impress their friends. They look awfully mean and have jaws strong enough to rip car doors off small vehicles and are clever enough to open doors. They hunt in packs and it's strongly encouraged to be wary if you find yourself in a stare-down with one in the distance. A distraction gator will stare you down while two others move swiftly to flank you. Let's journey to the Great Plains of North America. The American bison, majestic creatures who have made a truly miraculous recovery after nearly being made extinct by the white man and his pension for shooting things all willy-nilly. These creatures have made an amazing comeback in recent years and they represent the marvellous outcomes humanity can achieve when we put our minds towards conservation. Jeremy is giving me the thumbs up, so now is a great time to introduce one of our sponsors, Jack in the Box, who has just rolled out their brand new All Bison Burger. It's mouth-watering and delicious. I get one every day, they're so damn good. Flame-grilled bison just hits differently. Mm. I don't know why I'm not eating some bison. Right now, this footage is making me hungry. Where were we? Oh yes, nature. By now, I've talked at length about a number of animals from all over the world, from the deep ocean to the hot savanna. We dove deep into the jungle and soared over the great plains of North America. I've covered most of the fun animals and Jeremy is giving me the, we're definitely all going to get fired look but I don't care. This has been the balls and I've enjoyed myself. That's what life is all about if this little nature documentary does well. I guess the big wigs at the station could get me back in the booth for some more animal commentary. Producer Jeremy is shaking his head no. But I'll be back, I think, in the future to discuss more fun animals. I hope you've learned something. I know I have. I've enjoyed seeing all the wonderful animals that live on our planet. I'm Wallace Buttersnips and this has been Natural Nature Naturally, a natural look at nature. <laughs>